What we do here is go back, 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 back. back. Oh, hey there. Wow, I've actually got a view. Welcome to the first edition of Designing with Mizco. I could not be more grateful for you dropping by. What I'm about to show you are five of my most favorite features and tips in designing with Adobe XD. So even though Adobe XD is still in beta, some of their features and tools are incredibly powerful. They're gonna save you a ton of time and they've also been well thought out for designers. So let's take a quick look at this design concept that I've put together. It's a page dedicated to musicians to sell their online course. Now let's say we want to add a background image to this hero area. What I've done is I've selected the rectangle tool and I've created the masking area uh, on this design. Now I've downloaded the photo that I've, need, that I've wanted to use and I can simply drag and drop it right onto the rectangle shape. Adobe XD will automatically detect that you're trying to mask it when you drag a photo on top of any shape. So it could be a circle or a square. So as you can see, not only has it masked it, but it has also kept it so it will scale in proportion to the shape as well. So it'll always keep the photo centered. And if you're designing for responsive designs, as you can see, it's going to save you a ton of time as you can simply just uh, readjust the width of the banner. Now, Let's say let's see that there's a bit of a clash between the light background and the white text and we want to add a, a dark overlay on top of this image. We can simply duplicate it. We can click into it, set a black fill and also drop down the opacity just so it brings out the text. So that looks quite nice. It's looking good. Now the second thing we want to do is, we've got a, a review down here, but the product manager has come back to us and said we want to show the five latest reviews. Now traditionally we would have to double click into the folder, the grouped element, duplicate it, uh, bring it down, duplicate it, bring it down, I'm getting RSI, my hand is tired, there has to be a better way. So Adobe XD has realized that this is such a common problem. So what they have done is they've introduced a re repeat grid. Now what, what does that do? So you simply double click into, into your group. So you've got all your elements selected. Head over to the property menu on the side and hit repeat grid. And what that does is you know that it's activated once these toggles appear. And what, and what this does is it allows you to repeat a set of items as many times as you want with the simple clicking and dragging of this toggle. It just reveals absolute awesomeness. And I know like f for a fact that designers are going to absolutely love this feature. So let's just extend the artboard a little bit just to review the last five. And as you can see, it has automatically repeated all the items with us for us without having to do a lot of tedious and manual tasks. So if you want to jump in, you can also uh, hover your mouse within the repeat grid and you can actually adjust the padding. Whoa, it is so cool. So it saves you a ton of time. So let's say we want a gap of 50 pixels. Now we also want to add a divider in between each item. So what I like to do is just simply drag, just draw the line itself. We can set it to a light gray, copy it, delete it, jump into the repeat group item itself, paste it, you can zoom in and as you can see it has automatically updated every single item within this repeat grid oh my gosh how awesome is that so once again it's going to save you a ton of time cool and within this repeat grid adobe xd will detect what is a text layer and what is a shape so you can obviously change let's say it's michael you can ch Ooh, say it's Mi Mikhail. Kill Wong. Cool. Um, you can obviously change text and it won't apply to all the other um, Caleb. Oh, I don't even know why I thought of Caleb. Caleb P. It won't apply it to all the different items. Now, what about the images? Do we have to drag and drop images separately uh, onto these shapes to be masked? Of course not, it's because Adobe has thought about this already. So let's grab Jackie Chan. He's like, oh my gosh, why am I here? Um, let's grab these guys as well. 
And since these circles are going to be acting, acting as a mask within a repeat grid, Adobe XD has automatically detected that. So if you drag and drop these photos in, it will automatically fill it all for you. Once again, time saver, love this feature. Cool, so I'm quite happy with how things are turning out. Let's say we want to blur this uh, video background a little bit just so it doesn't um, conflict with this HD photo as much and just to show it's inactive. What we can do is we, move, we can move these items to the side. We can grab the rectangle tool and draw a rectangle to where, uh, to where and what we want to blur and simply hit the background blur in the property menu on the side. You can drop the amount and as you can see, it is so it is extremely simple to add blurs, um, which are a very common style for our for iOS and Android apps. And we can also bring these items back over across, and you have a swift Picasso blur on your designs, and it looks extremely beautiful. So let's, let's center this a little bit. Done. So now that we've learned how to mask photos, we've learned how to use the repeat grid, and we've also learned how to blur our backgrounds. Now, we're, we're quite happy with the design, um, but the product manager has said, I want to know, uh, is the course title a bit too low? I want to see what it looks like in a, 768, a 124 by 768 monitor. So what we can do is we can select the artboard, and we can create scrollable areas within this artboard. So on the right hand side, uh, under scrolling, we can hit the vertical scrolling direction and we can set this to 768, enter. And what this does is it will add a, a, a guideline, a dashed line to show you where the fold is. Um, not only that, if you want to see what it actually feels like in a browser in context of a 1024768 monitor, head over to the top right corner and hit the play button. As you can see, it will open up a new dialog and you can see and experience your design in what uh, in, in a smaller monitor, as you can see here. And what this does is it adds value uh, to your design process because you can actually refine your design before uh, investing into development and then only, only to realize that, hey, the content's far below the fold, we need to push it up, and you need to go back and, back and forth with the devs. So once again, another time saver. So now let's take a quick look at my final and most favorite uh, tool and feature of Adobe XD. So we're happy with the design and we've completed uh, three screens and what, what we want to do is we actually want to prototype and see uh, what it's like to click through these designs. So let's zoom in. So prototyping, you can forget about having to open up like a separate app and sync your designs and wait and just all this, all this model. What you can do is you can head over to the top left corner, hit prototype. Your toolbars will, your tool menus and and uh, bars will disappear, and your entire interface will be dedicated to prototyping. So there's two ways. You can simply click on your entire um, artboard and use this as an entire uh, hot uh, click click target, sorry, and you can link it to your second screen, and you can set your transitions and your easing as well. Or you can jump right in, holding down Control or Command, and select a, a specific link or button or section of the design and link it to a design, to your next design. And let's say we want to slide it left. I think the first one was sliding up, right? Yes, yeah, sliding up and sliding left. And so we've finalized the prototyping, we've linked everything up, and we're ready to actually test the design and have a play around with it. So what we can do is, once that's done, head over to the top right corner, hit the play button, and what this does is it remembers you wanted to preview it in a 768 monitor. You can browse around, cool, everything's looking nice. I want to head over to the second page. It has uh, slid up, and also I want to head over to the comments section, and it will slide right. As you can see, you've got your design, you've got your preview, you've got your prototyping, and then you also have the ability to share this prototype with friends, uh, your colleagues, or other stakeholders in the project, or within Adobe XD. So once again, this is the exact reason why I, I see a, a big potential in Adobe XD. It has kept everything all in one place for the designers, and it has made the design process much easier. 
So hopefully that makes sense and you found value in this video. If you've got any questions, don't forget to ask them in the comments below. If you did enjoy this video, don't forget to like, share with your friends and also subscribe.